Welcome back to my channel on linguistics and language learning. In this video, I'm going to show you the transformational rule applied to negatives or to negative sentences. As you know, there are two ways how to form a negative sentence in English. The first one is by using auxiliaries and the second one is without using auxiliaries. And you know that a negative sentence is indicated by the presence of the word not in a sentence. Now, let's analyze both of them. The sentence with auxiliaries and the negative sentence without auxiliaries. Now let's first analyze the negative sentence with auxiliaries. And here we take the sentence, they may, they may not come tomorrow. This is a very simple negative sentence. And this is also applicable to any other kind of negative sentences that use auxiliaries. Now, as usual, a sentence is composed of NP and FIP, noun phrase and verb phrase. And here, the NP is represented by personal pronoun they. And next, let's see the focus of this analysis that is on the verb phrase, because here actually is the core of a negative transformation. Now, the verb phrase here is composed of auxiliary, verb, and adverb. As you can see here, that verb is the main element of a phoebe. Without verb, there will never be any phoebe. Now here, we add the additional element of phoebe auxiliary. And auxiliary here is only needed in the deep structure. As you can see, here, that the sentence analyzed is a negative sentence. So we have here negative as one of the branches of the auxiliary. And then we have here tense and we have here M or models. Why we use models here? Because the sentence, the negative sentence in our example use may. Okay, it uses may as the model auxiliary. Now, let's see that negative is composed of not, okay? Negative is indicated by the use of not. And then the tense here, because we have may, it shows that the tense is present. So we have here present. And we have here model, okay? Model here is may. And uh, the other branch of model here, is zero cross indicates that model must be followed by an infinitive form without any addition in the verb, okay, or the base form of a verb. Now, let's see that verb is composed of the infinitive of come, okay, indicated by the use of capital letters, come. This is the infinitive form of the verb come in a sentence. And then we have here adverb tomorrow. Okay, so these are the basic elements before we use here a transformation. Now let's see, we apply here inflectional transformation. Why? When we are talking about tense, when we are talking about auxiliary, we are talking about inflection. So uh, the name of transformation is inflectional transformation. Now here, the transformation, or sorry, yeah, the, the inflectional transformation here involves may, which is in the form of present. So we have here may. And then we have here come, that comes after model as in, and it is indicated by the use of zero cross. It means that come must be in its infinity form. So we have here come. Now, the question is, have we finished the analysis? The answer is no. Why not? Because we are not yet analyzing 
or we are not involving yet the uh, uh, negative transformation. Now we are doing that negative transformation or T neck. Here you are. So we have here sentence. Okay, here, similar with the deep structure form. So we have here NP and VP, and then the NP is represented by personal pronoun they. And now we have here VP, and we have VP here, auxiliary verb and adverb. And then we have here auxiliary, which is composed of modal and negative. So here, the result of transformation, as you can see, that, ne that the negative element has come after the modal. Okay, because that is how we uh, use a negative sentence in our uh, daily conversation or in our in our writing. So we have here auxiliary, which is composed of modal and negative, and then modal is represented by may, negative is represented by not, and verb here is come, and the adverb is tomorrow. So now we have they may not come tomorrow. So the point that to be considered here is the inclusion of negative as one of the auxiliary in, in the deep structure form. Okay. And as you can see here, in the negative transformation, the negative element is moved to, uh, to become after, uh, after the modal auxiliary. So not may, but we have may not. Okay, this is very simple. This is the analysis of a tree diagram that involves negative transformation. Now, let's go on with the second type of negative, that is negative without auxiliaries. And we take here a sentence he does not need it as the example. As you can see here that we don't use auxiliary. Even though you may tell me that does is auxiliary, yes, it is. But does actually is a supporting auxiliary because there are three main auxiliaries. We have to be, and then we have modal, and then we have perfect auxiliaries. And does belongs to supporting auxiliary. It means that when the, the former three forms of auxiliaries do not exist, so we need do as the supporting auxiliary. Now, let's analyze the sentence. We have a sentence, which is composed of NP and VP. And then we have here NP, which is represented by personal pronoun he. Okay, here you are. Once again, the core of the uh, transformational rule uh, of negatives is in the verb phrase. Okay, so verb phrase is composed of auxiliary and then verb and then the NP. And as you can see here that we focus on negative sentence, so negative must be one of the elements of the auxiliary. And we have only here tense, so we only have two branches, negative and tense. Why? Because we don't have any other auxiliaries. Okay. In the previous sentence that we have analyzed, we have three branches of auxiliaries, negative tense modal, because we have modal as the auxiliary. But here, we don't have any main auxiliaries. Now, we have here the, uh, the infinitive form of need. Okay. And then we have here NP, which is represented by personal pronoun it. Okay. Now, let's move on. Let's move on to the, uh, the, the core of negative transformation. Now, okay, uh, negative is represented by not, and because we have here does, so the tense must be present. Okay, the tense must be present. Now, um, let's do supporting transformation. Why do we need supporting transformation? Because we don't have any auxiliaries here. And remember that the word not in English is, uh, can only be attached 
or can only be placed after auxiliary. So we have here, uh, we, we, we need here supporting auxiliary. And it is called supporting transformation or TSAP. And what happened here? Here you are. We, we have here supporting auxiliary. Okay, we take from here to have here supporting auxiliary. Okay, now supporting auxiliary is represented by do. So supporting auxiliary, even though we have do, does, uh, did, okay, do, does, did, but the infinitive form of supporting auxiliary is do. And do must be followed by infinitive without to. So I uh, I use here zero cross as, as the marker or as the symbol. Okay, now let's do the inflectional transformation. We begin now the inflectional transformation. And as you can see here, that do in its present form becomes does. Why? Because the NP here is the third singular person he. So we have to use does. And then we have here the verb in the form of infinitive. Why? Because supporting auxiliary must be followed by, yeah, by infinitive form of a verb. So we still have here need. So we finish doing the inflectional transformation, but we haven't finished yet doing the negative transformation. Now, we finish our project, okay? We finish our project. Now, let's see the uh, negative transformation. So we have here subject, which is composed of NP and VP. And then we have here uh, he, personal pronoun he, as the element of the NP. Now, what about the elements of VP? <clears throat> okay, now you can see here that we still have the same branches as the surface, uh, as the uh, deep structure. We have here auxiliary, verb, and NP. Now, um, in this transformation, we move the position of negative to be after or to be placed after the, the auxiliary. In this case, after the supporting auxiliary does. Now, we have here does not, okay? We have here does not. It is not, not does, but does not. Why? In the negative transformation, the negative marker must be placed after the auxiliary. So we have here not, okay? So does not, and then the verb, okay, as you can see here, we have here need. And the last one, of course, you know, we have here NP, which is represented by personal pronoun X. Okay, that's all. That is how we analyze negative sentences by using a tree diagram. I have demonstrated both types of negative sentences. The first one by using auxiliaries and the second one without using auxiliaries. I hope that uh, you can understand how to analyze any negative sentences by using a tree diagram. That's all, and see you in the next video.